a great little mayfly pattern, and as always, in Gary's own unique style. So let's go to the bench with Gary LaFontaine. We're going to be tying one of Gary's uh, patterns here. Uh, this is called a uh, twist nymph, but this is the uh, what pheasant tail version? Pheasant tail version, the pheasant tail twist nymph. Well, that you mean just a betas pattern? Uh, it looks like a blue winged olive, uh, the nymph, and it looks like a, a nymph that's alive. Now I want you to understand. Now you're tying one of my patterns, so don't give me any lip. Just do what you're told, okay? No lip. <laughs> no lip. Oh, well, no lip. All right. But we'll do the best we can here. All right, two pieces of pheasant tail for the hurrah. Uh, Am I supposed to take my glasses off so I don't see it? So it'll be ugly enough. You're, okay. you're too good a tire to actually be tying this. My flies yeah. have to be fairly ugly. All right, um, we're going to have a split tail of two pieces of uh, pheasant tail. Okay. So you want to make your, uh, your loop, your tail loop. Okay, we're going to make a little loop like that, you mean? Right, and then you're going to split the tails. And they're not very long. They're about the um, gap of the hook. Okay. Do you want two of them, or do you want two of them? Just two fibers. Two fibers, and 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 the gap, the tail is going to be the gap of the hook. So we're going to raise her up here. Make sure you start at the bend of the hook. Don't run it up. Okay. Now, what's different about this fly? Um, does it look like a, a pheasant tail? Just a normal pheasant tail nymph? Uh, yeah, with the added um, attraction of antron. And you look at mayfly nymphs. They're alive. They have movement. They have translucency. They have the gills, the tails, the legs, all of that moving. And you don't want to have to imitate all those individual parts. You just want to get the essence of life. And, and we have a very special technique here that is going to give us that essence of life. Okay. All right. Um, you now tie in the longest piece of pheasant tail hurled you can find. How much? One piece. One? One piece. One fiber. Right, right. American tires have this incredible fear of sparseness. And uh, being a psychologist, I should know the name of the phobia, but I don't. Um, doesn't take much to make a great fly. Worried One piece. Not you worried got that it. we don't have enough of anything for phobia. That's why we have three cars. Right. Okay, tie that in by the base. Rods. You want it on the tip? Nope, I want you tied in by the base. By the base. Okay. Never by the tip on a, on a twist because it'll break it. Right. Whether you're using peacock right. hurl or ostrich it's hurl right. or in this case pheasant tail hurl. Back into the tail. Right back to the tail. Yep. Okay. Get as much distance as you can. Okay. There we go. All right. Now pull your thread down. I'm bringing the thread right back. Okay. Okay. To hold the it. Tail. Hold it. Hold it, Jack. I actually messed you up a little bit already. Uh, we don't want a black thread. And I'll explain why in a moment. We want a fairly light colored thread. A yellow would uh, certainly no, be great. No problem. Real easy. Rather than redo all that. Okay. We'll just wrap it on. And just like that. And just sort of like if we broke our thread. Right. Pretend like we broke okay. our thread. Okay. Now suddenly we got yellow thread. Okay. Pull the yellow Man, thread I gotta down. Get, I got to get this, those butt ends. Okay. Trimmed out. <laughs> You're a lot more fussy than you need to be on my flies, you know. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. Threads at the back now. All right, pull the thread down. It's down. That's good. All right, now I want you to take uh, the BT's um, wax. BT's wax. Okay. Well, it's right there, right, right there. In front of me. Yep. And what this is a BT. very tacky wax. Right. Super tacky. Yes, yeah, super tacky. And run it on the thread. Okay, good. You, you, you've gone farther than you have to. That's good, though. That's enough. See how clean that comes on the thread mm -hmm. with no lumps? That's why very, we use very it. Nice. Right. Um, you're now going to take yellow touch dubbing. Okay. What we're going to do is a technique called double magic. Okay. Combine the magic of pheasant tail hurl and the magic of antron. And this is the only technique to do that. To do it, you need to touch dub. You cannot dub any other way. Touch dubbing, it's very finely chopped antron yarn. Um, touch dubbing is not new. This has been explained in old English books back in the 17th century. Uh, combining them is new. You're going to just touch, use your tacky wax, and you touch to the thread. Your touch dubbing is going to be a little bit shorter than the piece of pheasant tail hurl. It's not going to be longer than the pheasant tail hurl, just a little bit shorter. And you pick off a few clumps. Now you see why we needed that light colored thread, because it's so sparse that you can see the thread through it. That's good. Don't touch your fingers to it. Okay. Now, make a dubbing loop. 
The dubbing loop has to be a little bit shorter than the piece of pheasant tail hurl. Okay. All right. Good. Now take the piece of pheasant tail hurl, stick mm -hmm. it inside the loop. Okay, perfect length. Now you want to grab all that. Uh, you can use a dubbing tool, a loop tool. You can use uh, a hackle pliers. You have a rot rotating hackle pliers that grabbed it perfectly. Okay. Okay, get that, r run right. your thread up to the front. Yeah. Halfway. All righty, halfway. Yeah, just to your abdomen. Okay, now twist. Keep twisting. Keep yeah. twisting till it's twisted all the way at top. Is it twisted all the way up? Yeah, not quite yet. Okay. It's getting there. Ooh, really nice. That looks great, Gary. That's, yep. the, that's the double magic. You get, right, now we'll and it's, it. it's not a rib. You end up with the antron coming out an aura around the pheasant tail hurl. You got it. Just wrap it. Now this is your abdomen, so wrap it about three quarters of the way up. See, we got the the pheasant tail, which okay. is obviously a great material, obviously a great beta nymph. Okay, that's it now. Peter's nymphs are very simple, aren't they? Very slender. Nymphs. Yeah, yeah, it's not a, it's a swimmer. Okay, now we're going to have to tie in a wing case, case, and for that we're going to use six pieces of pheasant tail hurl. Okay. Any length, because it's going to be fairly short. Okay. Tip or butt? Uh, tie this in by the butt. Tie the pieces of hurl going backwards. Like this. Exactly, and we're going to pull those over in a wing case in a moment. Like that. Right. You're now going to touch dub again, except okay. you're going to so touch dub. Wax. You need wax, but you're going to touch dub with the olive. Right. Instead of the yellow. Well, that wax the, goes on nice. Because this is this finger's touch dubbing, available through you or through uh, Umqua. It's available through Umqua. It's in all great fly shops. Right. And. And this is what it looks like. Exactly. Kind of okay. Now the touch dubbing, Whoops. you control. See your fingers yeah. are your fingers yeah, are too I close. Love, well, I was holding on right. to that. Take, the other right. One. Take it and remix it. Now you control how heavy this goes on oh, by how hard by how hard you hit it. Hit it yeah. good and hard. There you go. You're done. Now you just wrap that as okay. your thorax. And you want to build it. Yeah. Up. You want to build it up. You want it to be fairly thick. Now I can pull some of that if I have. You to. don't have to. Now this is going to be thick. Okay, we'll leave a little room there to put our case down. Okay. Oh, I like the look of this now. And clean off, clean off the excess, which yep. is easy to do with touch dubbing, by the way. Just take your finger and uh, yep. along the thread and just pull off yeah, anything well, extra. I, I like a little of it hanging out there, too. Let's now see. take your, your wing case, your fe mm -hmm. uh, pheasant tail hurl, yep. tie it off. I'm pulling it forward, tying it off. All right, exactly. You want to wrap under. You want to wrap under the hurl right. a couple times. Right. We're not going to trim this off perfectly flush. You're going to leave a little, you're going to leave the stubs hanging out over sure. the eye. So you can put your... Right about there? Right about there. You got you can it. You always cut and then go down a little you, bit That's farther. good enough. Good enough. Okay. You got it. Now just tie in a, um, now whip finish it and you got the pheasant tail twist nymph. Yeah, I know you use your fingers. I like the cleaner approach. All right. This matches the nymph of the blue winged olive or the betis in the spring right now on the Green River. This is a proven killer. Uh, a lot of people use this fly on this river and uh, they do absolutely fantastic this time of year. Oh, looking good there, Gary. A little bit of shine. Yep, I like it. And brightness always always helps. Yeah, one of the things you got to watch doing these wing cases, and one of the reasons you wrapped, had me wrap underneath it like this, is that so that nothing gets in that eye. Right. When you tie these small flies, and this is a bait, it's going to be eight, 16, 18, 20, right. all the way 24. Right. It's hard to get a leader through there anyway without having some material in it. Exactly. You don't want any crap built up in there. I've just noticed that it stopped snowing. The sun's trying to break through, and I think it's time that we take these flies out for a spin. Well, what do you we, think? I think we better get some horse liniment. You're going to be catching so many fish, your arms are going to be sore. Oh. Oh gosh, I'm ready. All right, let's go get them. Thanks for uh, spending the time with us. Well, thank you for doing the time.